chose Dorothea Oram as our theorist because we like to teach. We like to give patients independence. We like self-care. We like our patients to be invested in their health. Dorothea Oram was born in Baltimore, Maryland in 1914. She earned her Master's of Science and Nursing degree from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. and received an honorary Doctor of Science degree in 1976. She had a varied background in clinical practice and also served as Director of Nursing Service and Director of the School of Nursing at Providence Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. In 1949, she went to the Indiana State Board of Health Hospital Div Division where she worked to help upgrade the nursing services in general hospitals in Indiana. She died in 2007 in Savannah, Georgia at the age of 93. Most nursing theories are defined by person, health, environment, and nursing categories. Dorothea Oram's theory is very similar in this regard. Oram defines a person as an integrated whole with a capacity for self-knowledge and engagement. Health is defined by Orem as a state of wholeness or integrity with physical, psychological, interpersonal, and social aspects being inseparable. Environment is a set of conditions that motivates a person to establish goals and adjust behavior to achieve specific goals. Orem views nursing as a helping service, art, and technology. What makes Orem's theory unique is the idea of self-care. Self-care is defined as the practice of activities that individuals initiate and perform for their own behalf in maintaining life and well-being. Self-care on a therapeutic level and continuous basis are essential to health according to Orem's model. Nurses assist the patient in sustaining self-care on a therapeutic level and on a continuous basis. Self-care agency is defined by Orem as the human ability for engaging in self-cares that is conditioned by factors such as age and environment. All of these factors, termed conditioning factors by Orem, have the ability to influence and affect self-agency. When a reason for self-care arises, such as a new diagnosis of diabetes that requires insulin treatment, the patient needs to provide self-care in the form of insulin to maintain health. If this person has a high level of self-care agency, they will perform the self-care with very little to no difficulty and remain in a state of health. If the person has no or limited self-care agency, a self-care deficit arises. When a self-care deficit arises, a nursing system will come into effect to restore health to the patient. We will now demonstrate how a nursing system comes into play. Hi, I'm Dorothea Oram. Self-care deficits are experienced by patients based on their health state and may benefit from nursing care or augmentation of care to resolve the deficit. Good morning. Hello. How are you dealing with your recent diagnosis of diabetes? Not too good. Would you like to learn more about it? I would love to. All right. Nursing systems are formed when the nurse intervenes with the client to resolve a self-care deficit or to regulate the client's self-care capabilities. I will teach you more about using an insulin pen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the deficit has been resolved! Inventions to maintain a sense of control over their experience helps to promote better outcomes. When a patient is involved and invested in their own health care, it provides better outcomes. I'm a willing participant in my health care. ways our theory is used in the professional practice today can be the example of a school nurse who is responsible for the well-being of the school, including the staff and students as a whole. A school nurse promotes health in an extended community by tracking immunizations and helps overcome self-care deficits and aids in the self-care activities such as medication administration, insulin injections, nutrition and dietary considerations, and overall health promotion behaviors. Another way is in the home health care setting, where we have the ability to assess cognitive functioning and guide in an age-appropriate manner. Establish a systematic training regimen that develops 
from the natural ability of the patient to engage in self-care. We develop a trusting patient-to-nurse relationship during training and afterwards. We have the use of the nursing agency to support decision-making and autonomy, investing the patient in their health outcomes. As the nursing agency, the home health nurses have the ability to assess self-care deficits along a continuum and promote self-care on a near daily basis. Lastly, it gives us the framework for collegiate nursing programs. It teaches students to advocate for their patient's independence as much as possible, to promote skills to empower patients in the event of a disability or baseline alteration. It gives us the knowledge and proficiency of using assistive devices in order to teach our patients and their families how to use them. As a future nurse, how will you implement my theory into practice? To implement your theory into practice, I am going to be advocating for patients' independence. I'm going to be teaching my patients. I'm going to make them active participants in their cares, health, and health care. Uh, one of the biggest tools at our disposal is our ability to teach our patients. Oh, and that's resulted in better outcomes. <laughs> <Here. laughs> the self-care. Hi, I'm Dorothea Oram. My self-care. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I feel like my eyes are all <laughs>